Hi everyone. So I want to I want to start in on Nietzsche's uh, the selections of uh, from Beyond Good and Evil. I've asked you to read uh, the prejudices of the philosophers and free spirits, um, and the, and the preface, of course. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to there's you know I really can't stress enough this sort of liberation to a terror, you know, and I mean it. And so I want to try to make it something um, well, like real in some way. Um, and so I figured I'd do it this way. There's this great poem by William Ernst Henley. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, it is Invictus, great movie, whatever. Um, but I'm going to share it with you because it's, you know, it resonates with some stuff in the, it, that we'll read in Nietzsche. So, um, and you no, know, I share this this poem. It was my grandfather's favorite poem, but that's not why I share it. It's my mom's favorite poem, but that's not why I share it. It's one of my favorites, it's, but that's not why I share it. So I'll tell you why I'm sharing it in just a second. Let's take a look at it. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond the place of wrath and tears looms but a horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Good poem, right? Uh, charge up, you know, woohoo, you know, take on the world kind of thing. Uh, what is this? No, I'm, uh, my, my head is bloody, but I'm bowed. You know, I, I, I will not, I will not bow my head before anyone. You know, I am, I am me. I'm the master of my fate. I'm captain of my soul, right? Uh, me. And don't even think. And if you try to take it, you will have to take me. Because I, there is no part of me that can stay with my head bowed, right? Just me. You know, this, this poem, and I mean, it's like, it's, you know, what's the, it's the, it, pride and will and, and self and self, you know, reliance and self preservation and self will and no one else. This poem was read at the execution of a man. Uh, it was read at the execution of the man, at the execute, the man's request, the, who was going to get executed. It was read at the execution of the man who, 25 years ago, like yesterday or the other day, uh, blew up the Oklahoma City Federal Building. Uh, it, it was read at the execution of Timothy McVeigh. It was Timothy McVeigh's favorite poem. Me! What is most liberating in Nietzsche is also what is most dangerous. Because it is like an empowering of self, of will, of life force. Without ever a leash or an orientation, and without ever even the possibility of saying, uh uh uh. And who are you? Fodder, fodder for my will. Me. <clears throat> so when I say, you know, when I say that this liberation liberates us to a terror, I, it, it, there is no measures. Not only is the weight totally on my shoulders, I have to be all of the meaning that I ever am. But there's no measure. I can't, I can't assume that everybody's on, anyone's on my side, or that everyone's against me or anything. And if they are, they aren't. You know what it is? It's just something that happened. Me. That's all that matters. So, you know, this is this is why I, you know I, I can't underscore. There's a lot of stuff that you know 
more than one wants to be like Nietzschean in some way because it's like, you know, wow, cool, you know, no, no chains, no, no nothing. Yeah, great, but no nothing. You know, beware what you ask for. Not that I don't know who's asking for it, but you know, some people like the, that sort of uh, rebellious part of Nietzsche, and it is there, but it like, it is there with teeth. One of my favorite quotes from him says something like this: uh, "We will have to do a." Uh, a remorseless war of the knife, you know, the, to to carve out these ideas, right? What does that mean? That means that we will have to be close to them in this in this war, this remorseless war with the knife. So, uh, no 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 drone. Uh, clearing the way of our minds by way of drone strikes or something like that because they are as close to us as our own breath. They are the things that we champion. Freedom. Self. All right, so the uh, Beyond Good and Evil is uh, the first couple of parts that I want you to, that I've asked you to read are about this, this, um, these two powers that Nietzsche is comparing. One is worth a damn and one is not, right? The two powers are, are the will to truth and the will to power, okay? And one might think, oh, geez, I wonder which one's good. Like truth, isn't truth good? Truth is good, right? Truth is good. Will to truth is a good thing, right? Isn't it? Isn't it? Nope. So will to power is Nietzsche's is what Nietzsche is championing, is what Nietzsche is, I don't know, he's not championing it. He's, he's saying that we need to take up life from this point of view. Uh, that, and that anything else is just self-deception. What is self-deception? The will to truth. The will to truth is self-deception? How could that be, Nietzsche? How could it be? Well, he tells us. And he tells us by way of examples and stuff that unless you've read everything lately, you won't get. Okay, so if you're sitting there reading Nietzsche and like, wow, I don't even know what that reference is to. I don't know what that reference is to. What the hell is that reference to? Well, then you are reading Nietzsche well. Um, come back to it every two years and you'll go, oh, I see now. Um, and it'll be, you know, just keep going, I, I guess, and, and hopefully it keeps going. Um, anyway, <clears throat> Nietzsche is critiquing this will to truth and, and over and against it, he's sort of indicating this will to power. He doesn't tell us what it is. So there's no like final, final presentation on this is like, here's what the will to power is. It ain't coming. It's not a thing. It's, it's, it's as close to you as your own breath. And you should not look to me, nor Nietzsche, nor anybody else to find out what it is. The more you need to look to somebody else to find out what the will to power is, the more you are clinging to the will to truth. Okay? So the will to, the will to truth is, is like something, and the will to power is... Well, we can, he does say some stuff about it, and we can sort of indicate things about it, but it's, it's, not, like a, it's not like a one thing. It's, it's certainly not like the three steps to the will to power or anything like that. So what's the will to truth? Let's understand this a little bit. The will to truth, I mean, it sounds like it's a good thing, but the will to truth is a will to a final answer, right? A will to like a theory of everything. I mean, the pursuit of, sci of science is the pursuit of the will, the truth, the discovery. Pretty soon we'll just get that last thing. We'll figure it all out. And really there's that toe, right? T-O-E, theory of everything. From cosmology to tiny little bits in particle physics to living things to organic, you know, organic chemistry, I guess that's the same thing. And, um, you know, and explaining the, the evolution of stuff in that framework. That a theory that would do all of that, it's coming. We're working on it. We're working on it because that's the will to truth. Or that's an example of it. 
There's other examples of it. Um, let me get to that. Um, but it seeks for like a final answer. It seeks for a final assessment of life. You know, what kind of thing am I? That's like a, asking a question for an answer. So that I go, oh, now I know how to live. Now I know what the right thing to do is. Now I know what I'm capable of. That's like to give, to look externally for a measure of the thing that I am. And for Nietzsche, that's, that's what some people have to do because they have weak wills. Now, does he, is he saying that like for real, like some weak will people? I think that, again, he's shaking the tree, wake up. So anyway, uh, let's see a little bit further. What is the, the will to truth more about it? He says a few things that I think are interesting. Uh, we'll see this as we, we look at it. First of all, it's unquestioned. It's, it, it is like, before I even start to think about anything, I'm th a thoroughgoing will to truth. And you are too. At least that's what he says. So uh, I'm not calling you names or anything. Uh, just, you know, this is how we think. The will to truth is, he says, well, it's a drive. And, and we'll see in this in a, in a second when we look at the text. All drives are tyrannical. Now, think of, so I think of, this is how I think of Nietzsche's understanding of the thing that we are. He says we don't really have an essence. And, and I guess he, what he means by that is that we can become like whatever sort of power we would make ourselves, right? So, but we're that power then. So we are, we are a power into the world. And through that power, either we, we aim for the lowest common denominator and say, I'm going to be, that's what I am. I'm a man. And that means I cuss and swear, fix cars, uh, and do all that other stuff that men do. You know, and I just sort of put on an essence. Or I can be a, a stronger-willed person and use that power to create an essence, only to smash it again. The, the, the bushes got to it before I did, not the diss the bushes, but it's that like, I think of it as like a thousand points of light, right? Or just like energies into the world, all sorts of, I am a perceptual thing, I am a sexual thing, I am a professor thing, I am a man thing, I am a son thing, I am a, 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 you know, a brother thing, I am a whole sorts of these relationships and powers and ways into the world that, that light it up and where I can like make my way. I'm all of these things at once. And so I'm, I'm my fears, I'm my, my desires, I'm my fantasies, my everything like this is like a way of going into the world. And the science and philosophy and psychology have reduced us to this. Right? So these thousand points of light, science, philosophy, psychology have understood humanity as just one of them. And that, that one is this, this like power of reason, this power of truth, this power of knowing. And, that's, and because of what it is, it occludes in advance all the others. Nothing else that, that doesn't match this one power of truth doesn't count. So all of a sudden we put ourselves into this box and said, the only thing that counts is the stuff that's in this box. Damn it. And so we have just taken all of these powers that we are and just made ourselves one. And so Nietzsche's just like, wow, do you even know what we could be capable of if we, we just let ourselves be? So, you know, this is one of the reasons for his critique. You know, we have, we have understood ourselves so that we, ha we can answer in advance all of the things that we cannot do, right? That can't be done. That can't be done. That can't be done. So we don't do them. Why? Because, you know, we're only capable of these things, so that stuff can't be done. You know, we put a self-limitation. Um, let's see what else I got here. So dogmatism is what he calls this. Uh, sometimes he calls it by other names. But dogmatism is what, like, clinging to 
for sticking to and not, I mean, like stubbornly sticking to just one point of view. So, you know, we can understand dogmatism in a religious sense. And when Nietzsche says God is dead, he means that in a religious sense, that dogmatism is static and stale and dead. Like disco is dead, right? I sort of, I was saying earlier, it was like, it's just, it's just done. There's nothing new. So, you know, But dogmatism can look like any ism. Any ism. Nihilism is a dogmatism, right? Capitalism is a dogmatism. Speciesism is a dogmatism. R rationality is a dogmatism. Nature is a dogmatism. In the sense that the sciences understand it. And we'll talk about this later on when we talk about the, Nietzsche's critique of the sciences. Nietzsche critiques the sciences, um, you know, in a way that's sort of like really dismissive. Uh, although I think that his critiques are powerful, you know, we, need, we can understand them without having to say that science teaches us nothing, right? But we have to understand that science is itself a point of view on the world. Uh, so what, what kinds of things are the world of truth? Well, like... Everywhere. It shows up everywhere. You know, when I tried to say earlier that when he says God is dead, he means it both as sort of a the, the God of the Old Testament or the New Testament, too, is just like done with. But it's also a warning. You know, we will seek this truth. We seek this everywhere in the human genome, in the in this in the cosmos, in alien artifacts, in whatever it takes to find an origin of ourselves and a final truth about what we are, so it shows up everywhere. So religion is a will to truth. I suppose one can take a look at various places where this might be, there might be exceptions to this, but wherever there's sort of a religious set of principles and stuff like that, that one adheres to because of, of self of being a certain way, that's a dogmatism. It, what makes it a dogmatism, what makes it a will to truth is that it assesses human life. So that's the sciences, that's morality, that's politics, that's, that's capitalism, that's, that's everything that says, everyone's like this, or all things are, all humans are, all whatever, is a box. So, um, what's the will to power? You know, so it, again, I I have to do this. Like, I'm, this is not me talking, you know, or, or I have to cover my face because I'm not going to, I can't say. But it feels, I feel like I have to say something. But all the stuff I say has got to come with the caveat that, well, no, no, these are just indications, okay? This, the will to power is a creative force. And it has as it's like energies into the world, each individual, right? So what's the, what, what sort of energies do you bring to bear into the world? Well, that's, that's, that's how we would understand will to power there. You know, so, I mean, it, it would be, it's like a, it's like a, an individual power, but it's a individual creative power found in all individuals or something like that. I mean, I even feel like I'm saying too much. Maybe it's not in all individuals. Maybe some people just have too weak a will to even be talked about this way. And sometimes Nietzsche sounds mean like that. Like some people just don't count here. So, you know, anyway, there's this creative power. So, uh, you know, it's not a thing. We'll talk about it in terms of independence. Um, a constant self-overcoming. Because whatever I am... If I am that continuously, then I'm not, then I just sort of stagnate and I no longer create. So it's got to be a keep, a, you know, an expanding or a continued molting of the old for the new. He says this, you know, make yourself incomparable. You know, what category does this guy belong to? 
Sometimes that means I gotta, you know, stand on necks, it seems. Sometimes I bow deeply in respect. So, you know, whatever it might be, however this will will show itself, it's variety, it's a, it's a power, and it's not established in advance, okay? Um, let's see. And the last thing is, is this, again, uh, it ain't always happy. So he said stuff like, uh, you know, living in the dynamism of the present, that sort of sounds neat, right? But that means that there's, like, with no measures, right? And so any sort of orientation I give to my life is just from me. And I'm the only one responsible. And I make myself by choosing it. So that's a heavy weight. Uh, let's see. Um, in the chaos, if it is chaos, if life be chaos, let chaos rule. And I, I mentioned this one earlier. If life be tragic, let the tragedy begin. You know, I get there's somebody said that there's that we can look to the transcendentalists maybe in New England at around the same, you know, late 1800s to see if we can find some stuff uh, that might resonate with Nietzsche, and we can. Um, I mentioned um, Emerson earlier, uh, the foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, but we can also think of Thoreau. Thoreau went to the woods because he wished to live deliberately, live on purpose, like on purpose. This is the life that I'm choosing. I'm choosing to live this way. I'm choosing to live this way. I'm choosing to live this way. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately. I wanted to, uh, with something like force life into a corner and reduce it to its meanest necessities, right? So like I wanted to, I wanted to take away all of that superfluous garbage that, that I call life and and live it at its like at its bare origin. This is a you know, this is like the thing. Is there such a thing? I, maybe not. But this is what Thoreau wants, and I think that we can think of of that in Nietzsche. What does it mean to like live deliberately, and not to be caught up in going through the the hoops of the the hoops of the hoops of life? So many sillinesses and so many things. Is this, is this what it means? Is this what life is? How would we know? Nietzsche's going to just like rip it all out from under us and say, well, here, take a look. Yeah. So um, this, is, this is like what the will to power is. It is. So it's not a thing. I'm not, and I'm not trying to be coy. And like, you know, I'm not going to tell them what it is. You know, that's, I, I know, but it, I'm not going to share. It's just the, the answer is like, unique.